Hello, everyone. Hope you're all doing well. And I mean everyone, all three of you. <laughs> all right, now. <laughs> Let's keep it together. Don't be overwhelmed with the success of the live streams. So, <clears throat> keep a straight in face. Let's see what we have here. We have one out of three brave person who has put a comment here. The other three are incognito, and they seem to be hiding. I don't bite. <laughs> Thomas says, hey, man, so how do you know that the neuroplasticity has started to take place? The same way that when you go to the bathroom and shit, you take a look into the shit, touch it, and see, ah, it looks like all my food has been digested. Now I know it's been digested. You can't tell just because you've gone to the bathroom and it's you shitting. You have to actually go into the shit and look to be sure. This is what you're doing, and you've been doing this from the beginning of your HOCD. Doubting, checking, wanting to find things, and that has given so much attention to your HOCD. That's why it's taken so long for you to be where you are. At the same time, you're telling me, male 22, Florida, and intrusive thoughts have, ex have drastically decreased. Like, it's pretty crazy how much it has decreased. It's been about six months. So from one end, you can see neuroplasticity has taken place because it's been decreased so much. From the other end, you say, how do I know? Isn't that how you know? And it says, can your brain be damaged? You see, this is, again, you're after that OCD. When you're following the OCD thinking that worried about, has my brain has been damaged? You know, the reason I say it the way I say it, because I've been there. I know what you're going through. It's about assurance. It's about your health, a perfectionism. I'm perfect. For that reason, you need evidence of everything. Even when you are breathing, perhaps, I don't know, I didn't experience this. You just want to make sure, is the breath really going into my lung? Maybe it's going to my stomach. Uh, how about if I just get a test to make sure that the passage for the air, I mean, this is just borderline, not borderline, <laughs> crazy land. You're entering the crazy land. And our whole purpose from all these uh, these <laughs> presentations and live streams is for you, none of you, to approach the crazy land. OCD can do that, can make you actually become Assholes, meaning, <laughs> meaning, meaning <laughs> multiple assholes. We are all assholes, but you will end up having different holes up your ass. And that's because of your doubting. Is it still one? Let me check it out. These are what plays in your head because it's all based on assurances. So one of the things that you need to do for o OCD and OCD subset is to let go of the assurance-seeking practice. Tell yourself, uncertainty. I don't know. Maybe I have an asshole, two asshole. I don't care. I don't know if my food has been digested or not. I don't need to check my shit. And neuroplasticity is taking place or not. I know I'm managing it and I'm just knowing what it is. It doesn't make me fearful anymore. It doesn't worry me or concern me because I know the science of it. So how long is it going to take? Who cares? The fact is, I know what it is. Therefore, I don't care. Hmm? It's like you imagining there is an intruder in the house. And that intruder, you imagine it's a snake. Oh, my goodness. Where's the snake? I can't rest till I find it and get it and throw it out. Get rid of it so my house will not have any snake. Eventually... The <laughs> infrared shows that actually the sound that you've been hearing from hitting the window or something, it's been actually a fly, not a snake. The sound that you've been hearing at night has been a fly. Now that you've been proven and it showed that there was a fly in the picture of the whatever they did, 
and you're sure that this is now a fly, you still can't let go. I have to see the fly. I have to catch the fly. I have to make sure it's a fly because the previous image of it being a snake have been convincing your mind and lodged in there. You believed it because out of fear, you want to go for the worst so you can be prepared to take care of the worst and that worst wouldn't happen to you. So you imagine it before it has any chance ever to come near you. So you imagine it, you believe it, and with that belief, even the contrary is actually approaching, showing you that there was no snake. You have a hard time to get rid of that image that you ended up believing it. And this is what really happens in many of these cases of OCD, OCD subsets. You believe your thoughts and you rise to remedy that by getting assurances about if this thought is real or not. So you'll be chasing something that never existed, but you believe that it is, it could be, what if it is? And then you're following that in order to catch something that is never there, to get rid of what is never there. And for that, you're going to spend your whole life and your whole day as you've been doing for the past six months. If you were doing what was recommended to you through these videos, it would have probably gone in about a month or two or much reduced. Or you would feel comfortable that, hey, I don't care, I can manage it because thoughts cannot change me. Thoughts cannot worry me because I understand where thoughts come from. I understand they have no validity, no credibility. My awareness is me. Thoughts is secretion of the brain. The brain is an organ. Its job is to make thoughts. The thoughts that it makes, it's based on all these information out there in the news, in the media, in everything, conversation, lifestyles that I see and all that. And it has captured all those that is out there and makes thoughts with it. And all of them, if most of them, if not all of them, are irrelevant to me. But because they happen on the surface of, on the screen of my head, I happen to think, well, you know, it's screen of my head. I'm a credible person. I'm a human being. I'm real. So what is um, reflected on the screen of my head must also be real. No. No. It's just like saying, well, I'm a credible person. I'm a clean person. Therefore, the fart that comes out of me, because it's me, must be clean and not nauseous. What does that have to do with you? You are the awareness. These are apparatuses that helps you to see the world and experience the world in a physical realm and help you to calculate something, figure out something, and so on by the brain. And the brain itself, like any other organs that we have, malfunctions. But you have no problem understanding and believing the malfunction of your liver, your kidney, or your intestine having a diarrhea, but you have a problem to believing that the brain also can malfunction. And when it does, you say, oh, it's not malfunctioning. It's me who's changing. That I can't help you. But if you understand these, then you have a very good chance to be able to take on the challenges, mental or physical in life, and do the best you can, and not letting it affect you as much as they could affect if someone doesn't focus on the science and the knowledge and learning and training and using the experts' opinions, such as Dr. Schwartz, Dr. Philipson, Dr. Jan Weiner, all these experts in OCD, OCD subsets that have put videos out and we can learn and listen and become more educated. All right. Having said all that, and remember, guys, you know, we I do my best in these live streams uh, and help you guys with the questions that you have. But remember, uh, there are certain things that I cannot continue for a long period of time here. Um, you know, and if you wish to discuss things on a one on one basis and get interactive um, communication with me, which is necessary for dealing with such matters um, to do with thoughts, consciousness, fear, desire, ego, or matters of relationship, breakups, and the inner movement of the psyche, or OCD, OCD subsets, and 
the process that we go through and how we understand it and how we help ourselves and the brain to rewire itself, these are all can be done and need to be done on a, a Skype conversation. So you can go on my site, mindthatseekstruth.com, mindthatseekstruth.com. Make an appointment for Skype discussion with me and together we'll discuss what's concerning you one-on-one -on, -one on Skype. All right, there it is. So, Thomas says, <laughs> that was pretty stupid of me. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? <laughs> and he says, I mean, I don't have another question to ask you. Good for you, God damn it. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> he says, I don't know what to ask. Yeah, yeah. But you know, you're you you are OCD makes you think that you have to ask a question even when you don't have a question, just to be sure, just to take the opportunity, because you need all these assurances. You don't need. We're all expert in living a life in a world of uncertainty. We're experts. Ever since we were born, there was nothing in this world that we know that we knew before it happened. So we were always uncertain who we meet, who we don't meet, if we eat or not, how our parents are going to treat us, how the school is going to be, how my exam is going to be, what girl is going to like me, or who's not going to like me. <laughs> and, Will I, you know, finish the school when I finish, when I get a job, will I get a good job, this and that, everything uncertain. And we were okay with it. But suddenly, now we got to be sure of everything that the brain sends out. If it's true or not, just don't give a shit. You live by your vetoes and choices. So it doesn't matter what the brain says, it doesn't matter what somebody suggests, it doesn't matter what they want, you live by your vetoes and choices you choose you select i take this thought useful to me or not i take that suggestion useful to me or not i go there to that party useful to me or not i go in that activity or choosing your what's beneficial to you or vetoing what you think it's not interesting to you that's all you can't control the brain and what kind of thought it comes out of it or not. You can't control the people who utter things out there, if it's going to be in line with your values, your interests or not. But you can control your selection of what is being offered or suggested or secreted, whether it's a thought of your own brain or whether it's a suggestion of other people. And that's the mechanism. That's how you control your life. Not controlling your brain, what kind of thought is going to come out, and i got to be in control of it. I don't want that thought, that thought to be coming in my brain. And Just like saying I don't want that person to say whatever he wants to say. It's a, separate, it's, it's a different entity, a separate entity. You can't control people, what they do, how they behave, what their lifestyle is, what they think and what they talk, what they eat. It's the same thing, you can't control your own brain because it's not, you, it's a brain that has been mounted on your body to serve you. And it can also come up with its own thoughts, and it always does, 80, 90,000 thoughts a day. None of them relevant to you. So if you understand this, that it's not about controlling people or things, it's about you making the selection that suits you. Vetoes and choices, that's how we live. Otherwise, we can't control anything, and we shouldn't want to as we never did all throughout our life. What did you control? Nothing. There was nothing that I could control. Nothing. All you can become is an experienced captain that can be knowledgeable about how to make sure that the boat that he's captaining will not capsize. That's all. You can't control the waves from blowing. Hmm? You can't control the wind from blowing. You can't control the waves from flowing. What you can do to become an experienced captain so you can be certain about how to keep the balance of your boat 
and it won't you won't allow it to capsize. That's all. The rest you cannot control, and you shouldn't need to. Otherwise, we've been running around trying to control everything. All right. Choices and vetoes. Now, what else? Chin Mei is here. It's been a long time. Chin Mei says, Hi, sir. 21 male India. My episodes with anxiety started a couple of months ago after a certain incident. I would get all sort of intrusive thoughts convincing me that something was wrong with me. Hmm. You know, you got to look at the source of the information. Who's convincing you? <laughs> a brain who's malfunctioning. So you're being convinced by a brain who's malfunctioning, yet the reasoning and suggestion of a damaged, malfunctioning brain is acceptable to you as a credible fact when it's trying to convince you that you should believe what the thought suggests. You know that the brain is malfunctioning because you're not what the brain suggests and you're questioning, you. what is this? What is it here? The fact that you question it and you wonder about it, that you're surprised about it and you don't like it, it's not your preference, that tells you that there's a contradiction contradiction between what the brain suggests and what your persona is, what your reality is. So that contradiction has caused an awareness in you. And that awareness is presented to you by the fact that you say, what is this? What is it coming from? Why is it here? It's not my preference. That's an awareness. And awareness is never there if there is no contradiction. That, so the awareness is telling you what the brain says is not the same as you are because there is a contradiction. If it was the same, you wouldn't have an awareness about what is this? What is it doing here? It's not my choice. You would just not even realize that there is a contradiction because there would be no awareness because there would be no contradiction. But whenever there's a contradiction, just like what the brain says or somebody suggests something, you don't like it. Your question says, huh? what, what is it? What do you mean? Huh? What do you mean? <laughs> and the same thing. So when there is a contradiction, there is an awareness. And that awareness, looking at it the other way, tells you that there's a contradiction. When there's a contradiction, that means what is being suggested by others or what is being suggested in the conversation, what is suggested by the brain, it's, it's irrelevant to you. It's not you. That's all you need to know. Awareness tells you that that is not you. Your choices and vetoes and your values have already made that clear to you. But OCD is called doubting disease. It makes us doubt our own understanding and logic. But the fact to remember is that you are accepting the proposed suggestions and evidences of a malfunctioning brain and you're willing to be convinced by a brain that is malfunctioned, but you consider its reasoning credible. How could a brain have two sides in it at the same moment? If it's malfunctioning, then you cannot consider it credible when it's trying to convince you that the malfunction is you. And why is it malfunction? Because there's an awareness in you about the contradiction, that you're not, there's a difference between what the brain suggests and what you have always been wanted to be and preferred to be and choose to be. Hmm? All of that makes you feel free rather than being bamboozled by trying to figure out anything more than what the answer is already available to you. Awareness comes when there is a contradiction. And that tells you you're not what the brain suggests. No matter how many million times it tries to repeat its suggestions into your head all right
Chin Mei says, I developed a fear of going insane, as in developing schizophrenia. That's part of the OCD that you're going to some length because you have given up your positivity and you think it is arrogant to be positive and self-assured and confident and you have to beg for health. So you have to be vulnerable and weak and give in to the suggestions of the brain bullshit because the watcher out there, your God or whatever you believe in, would like to see you humble before it can cure you or help you. That's all bullshit. Okay? So stop thinking you're going to have a schizophrenia and all that. It's all about fear. There's nothing that way. Of course, you can always check with your psychologist, psychotherapist, and they can help you to prove to you that uh, the condition of your brain is what it is. OCD or depression or, you know, bipolarism or schizophrenia. And once you do that, then you wouldn't have to second guess yourself or all these things that you're writing here. Says, or having the urge to puke. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> Just be sure you're not close to any girl or something because you puke, that's the end of a date. She's not going to accept your invitation. <laughs> that wouldn't be a very welcoming thing to do. So coming across any such video heightens my anxiety. Yeah, because you're prone, an OCD brain is prone to accept suggestions. That's one of the things about OCD, which makes you prone not to believe in your awareness and your knowledge, but be vulnerable to suggestions and quickly accept what comes from out there. That's why if you read a line from something, you think, oh, it must be credible because somebody else said it. Who the fuck is that somebody else? Why don't you watch Dr. Schwartz? Why don't you listen to the podcast of Dr. Philipson or watch the videos that Dr. Jan Weiner has? And these people are experts, and you just read something on fucking Reddit and the, or wherever it is, or somebody says something, somebody who doesn't know shit and can't handle this uh, glitch is putting his or her own uh, ideas or understanding, and then you believe what the shit that they're writing. Why? Because it's written. We've been duped since childhood. Whatever is written must have credibility. No, it doesn't. It's just some idiot wrote it. <laughs> and it says it followed random patterns and reasons yeah it's because you allow it all you have to say is says okay whatever yeah I, i've got the schizophrenia okay fine okay i'm depressed okay fine. okay i'm gay okay fine the more you try to fend off a thought the thought gets energy from it bounces back by creating this interaction because it gets its energy and feels it's alive by being occupied and busy it has to create that busyness how does it create it by throwing something negative that is unlike your values to get a rise out of you and that's what you've been feeding it rather than say yeah okay you think i'm gay okay i'm gay thank you but you live with your choices and vetoes doesn't matter i walk in the street maybe 10 people say okay oh he's gay okay fine Maybe they thought because, I don't know, um, I don't know, something, they thought that it represents gain. Okay, fine. But what does it do to me? It's their opinion. The brain the same. Brain says something. It has its own motives, and you know the motives are that it wants to feel alive, and for that it needs to be occupied and busy. For that it needs to give you shit so you can rise and respond, so you can create that back and forth. And for that, in that, it, it, it creates a security for itself and it creates as if it exists, it's alive. When you know that, then you shouldn't give a shit. So, okay, I know the motivation of that. This is what science is about, to make you come out of believing nonsense just because you're vulnerable in a state of OCD, which makes you doubt everything. And all it takes is somebody to come and say, doesn't matter how much I say something here or many experts out there you go and search, all you need to hear in OCD glitch is somebody say something contrary for their own lack of understanding 
and suddenly you say, oh my goodness, because that shattered your level of assurances. Because this whole OCD is called, French call it the doubting disease. Hmm? So all it takes is just to give you something, a reason for you to doubt, even though it's got no credibility, what they say, but it's enough to shake the surface of the water that you have found solace in having convinced yourself that oh, everything is cool, I know everything, how it does, how it works, and I'm satisfied that no, everything is cool. And somebody comes and throws a pebble into it, and it just moves the water, and you, oh my, oh my goodness, what if, what, if I'm, what if I was wrong? That's OCD. And that's why we, you know, turn the light switch off and on 10 million times because we think if we don't, my father will die. It's just some fictitious thing, a glitch in the brain that makes you believe every negative thing, everything that you, you start doing crazy things in order, you know, I could I could say that I, I, I saw myself, I said, look, man, as a wonderful person as you are, as duty-bound as you are, as responsible as you are, but the stuff that you do that nobody sees, you're beginning to look, I mean, you can see you're going crazy, aren't you? That made me see things that it should the way it should have been seen. And I said, well, fuck it. I know I'm not crazy, and I'm not going to continue doing shit that makes me look like if I'm crazy, not in other people's mind because they don't see it, but I do. So I became the good judge of myself, and I started cleaning house. I started creating understanding, knowledge, and I powered myself through. And I didn't know any of the stuff that I've researched for the past many years. I knew nothing of this. I just had this strong willpower that that's not what I'm going to sit with. I'm not going to allow this to expand. The more I do it, I realize the stronger it gets and the more I would believe in the shit that I was doing. Washing my hand 10 times, the light switch and checking the door and all the garbage. So, and when HOCD hit, the late years, I was old school. I couldn't even fathom that that thing has any reality to it because it was me and I knew myself. So my awareness never allowed such doubt about my sexuality to come to picture. But the brain, to a person who wouldn't have a strong willpower and the brain, and come from a background that is all through his life. The society wasn't like this. We were not bombarded with all these unnecessary discussions about things that is not in line with my values all day long. Propaganda and making this other possibilities to be like if you're a celebrity and keep talking about it on TV programs, on social medias and promoting this other lifestyle, this would affect the brain to get these informations that these informations would not be necessarily of any positive information to a person who doesn't have such inclination. But it does infiltrate the mind of a child to keep having this as a possibility when it's not a possibility for him or her. It very well may be possibility for some other people who are born that way. And we all respect each other and live alongside each other. And we, you know, everybody is precious and have their lives. But why do we have to promote this in such a way in so many discussions to turn the mind of a child or a mind of a person who has no interest in this to become occupied with this topic? So the brain, as its nature is, pick up these topics and start using it to pound the brains that are not actually have anything to do with that inclination. This is why you're bombarded with these HOCD and OCD is a lot more today than when I was a kid. That's why I was never hit when I was a kid with it. Not in this way, not in any way, other than the regular feelings that kids as they grow up could experience. And that could make him think that even though when I was, um, when I would think that that friend of mine is, is such a good friend and I liked him, it wouldn't dawn on me or any interpretation that this is, a, is anything other than an emotional interaction. But today, 
it's being looked upon as if it has to it, that if you like someone that's sexual we're human beings we're full of energy we like dogs cats we love them we have emotions but suddenly if you like somebody else because he's pleasant looking or he's got a good energy or he's kind or polite or makes you feel secure among all these other people who are not friendly so on that emotion is not a sexual it's a friendly emotion that you feel safe and secure with another friend around but the interpretation of it when we were kids was just that the interpretation of it today in the kids brain with all these other uh, tangents and other uh, statics comes to be something like a HOCD it develops into that because the brain catches on to it and and makes it something that is not so I'm saying to you you have to understand that first of all it is perfectly normal for you to uh, be impressed or feel somebody else is very good looking and notice somebody else's good looks same gender nothing wrong with it but the interpretations that is comes with it in this day and age is the problem otherwise we're all human beings you would be proud to see somebody good looking same gender because you said that's my gender and he looks good and he's a good looking guy kind of one of our team is good looking so it kind of elevates us all that's the emotion that you have but today is translated into oh you like the guy you know and the brain runs with you want to kiss the guy it, everything goes toward that because that sort of a lifestyle is spoken about more than necessary and not among just the people who are in that lifestyle among all other people which they don't have any reason to have to be involved in that sort of conversation or topic of discussion but unfortunately it is like everybody should be interested in that sort of thing as is there's some kind of a push navigating people to to i don't know experience that so that's why i say we live with our vetoes and choices so regardless of what suggestion the brain for whatever reason it secretes or suggests a malfunction and whatnot or whatever other people lifestyle is or their suggestion is you simply live your life with your vetoes and choices <laughs> slip my mind <laughs> all right vetoes and choices that's how you live not by the suggestion images or thoughts of the brain or your friends or other people who live in our world all right Tim Subs is here. Says 19 male England. Hi, Mehran. Hope you're well. Thank you very much, Tim. <laughs> Thomas says, I'm not asking you for reassurance. These are my only questions that I could ask you. I don't have woman problem, motivation problem. Good for you. That's my boy. Okay, Lol says male 22 from Florida. Says, how can I do exposure and avoiding reassurance? Well, forget the reassurance, right? <laughs> And for ERP, you have to find your specialist who is in is an expert in OCD and ERP and or CBT, cognitive behavior therapy. Cognitive behavior therapy is what we're doing here. Now, for ERP, you got to find your um, your specialist and to learn how to be the how to how it's done yeah okay lo says exposure has helped me 
with HOCD. However, I feel great while doing exposure. When I go away of the exposure, the false attraction, well, for that, you may take a look at uh, my videos that I have about 3,000 videos on this channel, maybe 1,000 of them is on OCD, HOCD stuff. So you can search in my channel search engine for um, false attraction or attraction, the word attraction or false, and see what comes out. I'm sure I have videos on that. I know I have. And so you can go through that. And then the cognitive behavior therapy and through these videos can couple with your exposure therapy. And then you may not need the exposure therapy all the time. So when you're away from it, your cognitive abilities will help you to bring balance to your day. Stephen is here. He says, hi, Miran. Hello, Stephen. He says, Stephen Mail, 42 Los Angeles. Thank you for that. He says, thank you for the wonderful email last night. You're quite welcome. The recording, you got it. Yeah, I, I, when I came home and I saw your question, and don't you all, everybody, send me questions now. What Stephen talking about is gone on my site. He's paid money and <laughs> sends me a question. Then I record the answer and send the recording back. So that's what we're talking about here. Because I... Honestly, guys, I receive so many questions on comment, and I can't really turn this channel into a personal, private consultation. These comments need to go on through my site, make an appointment for Skype consultation, and we'll discuss it thoroughly, what concerns you. But expecting me to constantly, in addition to the free live seminars, to also sit down and respond to your comments because your questions come through. That's unfair a little bit, uh, insensitive, because after all, as much as I love you all, I'm putting my efforts and time to help everyone, but this is my business. So therefore, I can't constantly be writing answers back. You got to go on my site, make an appointment, or there are certain services that I have, do you pay for it? And by all means, that would justify the time that I should take away from other things and other clients and put it on you. And I will definitely gladly do it because I love what I do. I love helping you guys. But at the same time, if I want to dedicate more time to it, it has to become a viable business. And for that, I need to make you guys understand these are free, but you want more questions in private way, either make it appointment for Skype consultation, or just like Stephen, go and put your question there. It costs you a little bit money, and then I will record the answer for five minutes recording. I'll send it to you. And I appreciate understanding that, because many of you, you have no idea how many emails I receive, and everybody makes it like if they're dying. Well, first of all, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a surgeon. There's nothing urgent emergency here. And if there's something emergency, you got to go to a doctor or to a hospital if something problem. But to creating that kind of anxiety in my heart that you're this, you want to kill yourself. I mean, that just doesn't make me feel good, makes me scared of what is this person's life is all about. How can I help him? I can't. So you put me in a bond and I can't help you from far distance. And you're not doing the right thing by consulting your physician or going to a hospital. Just make me feel afraid. Just because you want to push me to respond to you instead of making the time, coming to the free seminar sessions and ask your questions here. I'm here for you. And you just say, well, the time doesn't fit my schedule. Well, too fucking bad. Doesn't fit your schedule. But you want me to 4 o'clock in the morning to read your stuff and Quickly, write it back, otherwise you're going to kill yourself. I mean, that's not fair to me. And you all know that this is not really true. You just say it because you want to use my emotions. And with the love that I'm giving you guys, that's not fair. Don't do that to me. I feel about you guys. I care about you guys. So putting that kind of a fear into my heart that something is going to happen to you if I don't respond to you right away, that's ludicrous. That's unfair. So... You want to talk to me, go on my site, make an appointment, or you know, go through the process. And soon I'll have another 
um, service on the site where you can actually just um, chip in for a certain amount and enter the group session instead of private session. A private session is, although it's very nominal compared to many people out there who have these services, uh, and my knowledge about these things that I talk about is enough to warrant a much higher fee, but my fees are very reasonable for everybody. But even so, I have a group session soon that you will pay a fraction of that private session and you'll be able to participate among 15 other, 10, 15 other people. And then I'll, there'll be a lot more time. You listen to their question and answers and benefit from that, plus your own. And we'll be face to face and talk rather than, um, you know, typing and all that. So that is being added. My programmer is completing that. And hopefully, as soon as it's ready, we'll put it on and you guys can, I don't know, pay something like. Uh, 30 bucks or something and come in for two, three hours and if there are 10, 20 of you, then we will be able to have a session called group session. I don't know how much it's going to be, $50, $40, $30. I have no idea. I got to see the numbers and how it can work. But it's not going to be $100. So that's going to be at least half, if not less. All right. Now, And Thomas says, oh, Thomas talking to somebody. Is, says, bro, Mehran, I have been seeing Mehran ask the same dating thing for three years. <laughs> okay. Stephen says, I feel much better. Why on my work night, I feel lonely, usually on the way to work. Yeah. You don't feel lonely because she's not there. You feel lonely because you're thinking about when you guys were together. You got it? In the memory, there's a file that we talked about it. It's called the desire file. When you think about, reminisce about when you were with your ex-girlfriend, it brings to your attention the selected pleasurable moments and experiences because the brain navigates through the memory and finds good memories. Brain doesn't like to think about bad stuff unless we have to. Life is about pain and pleasure, and brain prefers pleasure. And it always goes towards the pleasure points of a relationship, X or otherwise, because it makes you feel good. And because it doesn't think about the problems that arose and was in that relationship, you end up with the pleasurable moments in the memory, and you never really become so much focused on how negative the relationship was and instead, you're focused on how pleasant these selected moments were, and that triggers the desire file. Desire file is a file that there are certain prerequisites to a desire to be born must be met before you desire someone or something or you want to buy something, whatever. These steps have already been taken when you guys met and when you guys were together, and it's been recorded. When you go into the memory reminiscing about the ex while on the way to work or wherever, you see her there. And when you see her, that's the first step of the prerequisites of desire to be born. And it clicks open the desire file, which in it, all those steps that needs to be taken as a prerequisite for desire to be born is recorded and it's already there and because the file is open, the brain thinks that all these prerequisites steps are again met just now freshly. And because of that, because the brain doesn't understand the difference between virtuality and actuality. So the file opens and it thinks all these steps are now met again. And for that reason, it desires her again. And when you desire her, when the brain desires her and she's not there, you feel lonely. Because the desire, eh? and then it creates a vacuum. When there is no desire, there is no loneliness. 
when you feel the desire is completed, it's necessary prerequisite steps, and it's now full-fledged showing you that you want to buy that thing, you want to write that thing, you want to be with that girl, all these things, depending on what it is, the subject, then you feel I'm lonely because I don't have that what I'm desiring. So the problem is not that you're lonely. The problem is that you're in the memory. You're living in the memory. Memory is the past and past is dead. So you're living in the death of the past. And in the death of the past, desire can be triggered by the files, but it cannot be fulfilled. So you will always feel lonely. Don't do that. Stay in the present moment. Involve with your activities and and have a presence of mind, mindfulness, meaning if you're driving, focus on driving. If you're going upstairs, focus on going upstairs. If you're at your job, focus on your job. Mind and body together. That causes you to be in the moment, not in the memory. Memory is the past. Past is dead. You'll be living in death of the past. And if you're in, in the moment, you're not in the memory. You're living in the actual life. And in actual life, there is no loneliness because you're doing something and you're focusing on accomplishing that something, whatever it may be. The brain doesn't think it's lonely because it's occupied doing something. When you're in the memory, it's all virtual. It's not doing anything. It just causes to desire something that you cannot fulfill. Therefore, you feel lonely. Capish? Now, go find these fucking things that I said somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> so I wonder, with all these content and these things, why do we not have like 14,000 viewers and we have 14? By the way, it's pretty good today. <laughs> I just don't knock it. <laughs> all right. Anonymous is here. Oh, my goodness. It's been a long time, hasn't it? Lisa? Can HOCD make you feel disgust from the opposite sex genitile? I freak out because of this. That's another uh, intrusive thought. It's, it doesn't make you feel disgusted. It's because it, the brain is trying to get a rise out of you and brings all these things that are not in line with your values or not in your real uh, interest, but it, it proposes that to you. And then this whole thing, a confusion, all these images and all these suggestions uh, causes you a little bit of a discomfort. Otherwise... Not really. It's just intrusive. It's nothing, no, no scientific base on it, really, that dying off. All right. Alex Kananis is here. He says, hello, Mehran. Alex, male 29 from Greece, says, my ex-girlfriend of five years cheated on me and I have a hard time letting go. So you're telling me, Alex, that you love a girl. You want to be with a girl who cheats on you. That's what I'm hearing. Unless your dick can only fit her vagina, and there's no other woman that can actually like your dick or fit in there, then I think what you're saying is just bogus because you're telling me you're incapable of wanting, loving a woman who's loyal to you and loves you and wants to be with you. But you want to be in love and you crave a woman who cheats on you. Why? Because you have no fucking backbone, right? Is that what you're telling me? Because I'm not saying that. I'm hearing it from you. Because you tell me the girl cheated on you and you have a hard time to let it go and go on with your life. Which means to me, translates to me, that you love girls who are not loyal to you and they go fuck with other boys. Meaning you have no fucking standards in your life. You have no expectations. All she has to be is a female. Dangling her vagina and you're going to run. <laughs> no expectations. No policies. No standards, no morals, no manners, no loyalty. So the problem is not in what has happened. 
The problem is in you. You need to be more confident and respectful to yourself. What do you expect from your life? You expect other shit on it? Or you have some backbone that you value your future wife, your children, being born from someone that is loyal to you, someone that can meet your standards. So once you create these standards and love yourself, respect yourself, then you will know that when someone does that, what she did, it's got no place in your life. And she's not the last woman on earth because what you're telling me is that her having cheated on you with some other guy is better and classier and more with morality compared to other women out there. Meaning all other women must be worse than her. So you're making all other women actually totally useless and lower value than her, her behavior. Is that what you're telling me? Because thinking that she's the only one with what she has done and you can't find someone better out there means every other woman out there is less than her. Is that just? Is that reasonable? So I don't want to go on because it just makes you feel a real asshole <laughs> to treat yourself that way. <laughs> and I want you to stop that and have certain balls, backbone, standards. She was unfaithful to you. She has no business coming back. Even if she comes back to you, you should not accept her. If she broke up with you and went and with somebody else, that's not in your business and that's fine. But if she's with you and does that, then you have no business wanting her back, even if she wants to crawl back. you got to have some standards. All right. Says, our time letting go. I have a lot of mixed feelings. No, there is no mixed feeling. Your feeling is mixed and under the influence of your desire for pleasure and ego. But in reality... Everything is clear. She was unfaithful. She can go. What else is there if you're not faithful to each other in this life? What else is there? How are you going to build? What's the foundation you're going to build anything on it? Any moment can crumble. The best of the best, they crumble, let alone if it just begins like this. So you better take your bag and never come back and close the door and never let her back in. Yeah, no jealousy. What jealousy? She lost a good dick. <laughs> Unless you have no respect for your dick either. Well, then you know, you're out to lunch. <laughs> respect yourself, including your dick. So she got for she went for the lesser dick. That's what you always should think. <laughs> no anger, no jealousy. Now you're free. Like Austin Powers. You're free, baby. <laughs> go, go for another. All good. Come on, come on, this is him, everyone. Mail 25, Indiana. Hello there. How are you? Alex says, also, I get a lots of flashback from the past. I want to get rid of them all. You don't have to get rid of them. Just move forward. Look forward. You know, you if you want to get rid of something, you got to keep looking back. And why? It's back. It's past. Past is dead. It doesn't exist to want to get rid of it. It's already gone. So... By keep looking at it, you're keeping it alive. By keep looking forward, they'll be gone further and further. That's all. Because there's no reality to it. It's already passed. It's dead, gone. Don't need to get rid of it. It's already got rid of. <sighs> Anonymous says, I'm a male, 22 years old, and I've been suffering from HOCD since last year. Yeah, okay. I've got lots of videos on it, Anonymous. And you can just go in, put in OCD or HOCD I'm on the search engine of my channel. You'll have a ton of it, everything you want to know, and it will help you out. Just like thousands and thousands of others that have been helped through this channel, you'll also eventually learn and educate yourself and you know exactly what's happening up here. And you understand it's a glitch and what the malfunction is all about and how to reprogram and rewire your brain using four steps of Dr. Schwartz and all that, which I have a video on it and explained it carefully and clearly. And you'll be 
good as new, on your way. Cassander says, hey, Mr. Mehran, Cassander, um, Cassander, yes, I, I remember, I believe. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was about your wife, and you're somewhere in the United States, and the rest of it I know, but I don't remember exactly, and I don't think I want to discuss it here, I guess. Uh... Unless I'm mistaken. <laughs> because I can't tell from this. It's okay. Um, and Cassandra, you must have had another message back there because I don't see the one that I can connect. Cassandra, there few messages from you it says hey mr mehran i'm cassander then you jump to saying no sexual way or romantic with an asterisk that means something is missing for me to connect this message to it um hmm. Rapolis Merkis says, hello again, I'm male 30 and trying to get my life together, career, exercise, recording books, uh, reading books on different topics. I don't go to dates. My last relationship was a year ago. I feel that I'm still healing from it. No, there is no need to be healed. You're not sick to be healed. What are you waiting? What do you mean healing? Healing what? You're not sick. You went through a relationship. Every relationship has a duration. Duration of that thing was whatever it was, and it's finished. Oh, what? She's not the only woman on this earth, and the universe's ass didn't open, and she fell through, and nothing else. It was an experience. You learned something. She learned something. You were together for a while. Now what? She's not end-all, be-all. She's not going to help you with your rent or your job or your health or your future it's all in your own hand you're an independent person and you had that experience with her now she's gone her own way and you go your own way find another one at age 22 you have no business to think that the girl that you were with is the one to be your wife no you hardly know yourself at that age let alone know what kind of woman you want so this was what it was to prepare you to know what you are a little bit more and the older you get you have more standards and expectations about the woman that you're looking for and to be ready and prepared to meet the other opportunities and eventually you know about 28 years old you will have enough knowledge about yourself to know what kind of woman you want and you will meet the right woman at that time at this time none of them are the serious girl that you're supposed to be thinking oh it's a forever girl thing no every time we meet a girl no matter what age you are, we think that's a forever girl. Because that's how, how we are we guys just want to think that every girl that we see we got to marry them at least that's the old school way. And eventually we'll learn that's not the case, especially in this day and age. So be cool about it. Nothing has gone wrong. You're everything fine. You don't need to heal. Get off your ass and go enjoy your life. Yeah, well, you know, that's on you. You're going to actually miss out of your life by just sitting on your ass and thinking, oh, she left or whatever. You know, good riddance. Fuck it. Move on. Well, uh, if going out with you, you, you it hinders you because uh, you're not going out because you got to pay for your date belt. Fucking hey, yeah, you're a man. Go get a job, make some money, and when you take the girl out, you pay for her. That's how it should be. Stop, you know, mooching around or thinking that the girl should, what, what? Treat the lady like a lady. Make them feel that they are women and they're worthy and they're being protected and being loved and taken care of. And if you expect these things by offering this classy behavior as a gentleman, then the women will remain to be ladies. But if you treat them like, you know, don't open the door for them, pay your own way, and you're turning them into what? And the men... And the ladies will stop being ladies. We'll just be assholes. 
And that's not what you want in your life. So treat a lady as a lady. Treat a woman as a lady. Every woman, I don't care what they do, treat them as a lady. They will see that they're expected to remain ladies. So they will mentality, their behavior, their femininity, their sweetness, their kindness, their compassion and passion and love and care will remain as what we need in this world. The femininity of a feminine, femininity of woman. We want and need that. We don't want this bullshit things that is going on that they some women think they don't need men and they can do everything themselves. So they cannot. We are two different energies and we both need each other. So let's end that bullshit talk and you treat the woman right and go get a job, make money, and when you take your date out, do everything they are supposed to do. Open the door, buy flowers, take them out, pay for them, and respect them and love them and let them make their choices and don't press them into anything. That's how you protect and take care of your woman or your date. All right. Now, Oh, it's time for me to end it because I'm supposed to go and see my mother. So, guys, I'm sorry I can't answer all your questions. I got, uh, uh, actually, I got carried away by staying longer. So, uh, forgive me, the ones who I can't answer your questions. Maybe tonight, late, I will have another one. But um, I have to cut it out and go see my mom. I don't want to keep her waiting in the care center. So... So it's time for me to say, I love you all. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to share a thing or two with you. I look forward to our next live stream. In the meantime, be good to yourself and to the others. I'll talk to you soon. And bye for now. Subscribe on my channel. Visit my channel and go through the videos that you might be interested in. Mindthatseekstruth.com is making it one step away to talk to me one-on-one -on, -one on Skype and discuss what's concerning you. I'll talk to you soon.